Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're going to be talking about Nick Goulas. He was one of the greatest promoters of all time. Maybe not the greatest payoff man in the world, but one of the greatest promoters of all time. We're going he to look at his cards every week with the greatest card he's ever signed. I'm every pretty week. sure for this program, let's look at this program. This is volume five, number two. The National Wrestling Alliance Championship Wrestling Slamogram Official Program 50 Cent. Uh, let's uh, let's see if we can look at that right there. So we got Dutch Mantel, right? Yeah. Let me uh, let me go. Uh, George Gulis and uh, looks like uh, Ken Lucas. Gulis, what's that say? Gulis. Two of, two of the greatest draws in history. <laughs> well, what about George Gulis? Or is that who you're talking about? I'll, I'll never tell. I like George. <laughs> yeah, I like George, too. George, to me, George was always a, a to me, was a great wrestler. This thing's, this is what it says. Ken Lucas, Randy Who, this would have been during the time Randy Savage and Dutch Mantel, uh, this picture was took uh, during their feud. Uh, George right. Goulas. Hey, I, a lot of people don't like George Goulas, but let me, I think he did some of the best selling of any wrestler of, of, Even George, George gets a lot of heat that he really doesn't deserve. All right, here's that. Uh, we'll we'll go on that. Uh, basically, it says the three men who will like who would like to destroy the Japanese connection, uh, and and it, and it goes on further in here. Uh, here is a uh, this one you can't see too good. Uh, Ronnie, do you know who the top people are? Well, if I if I can put it up there. You know who the top people are right there? On that one page, looks like it's Bobby Eaton and Tojo Yamamoto. Well, let's look at this. Let me uh, let's turn it over here and let's see if you can figure out who these people are that's up top up there. Uh, well, I'll just tell you, it's Bobby and Don Far uh, Far uh, Fulton. I think it is. Yes. Uh, who was who was uh, who was the other uh, Fulton? I don't know. Yeah, do you know? I don't remember. Evidently, though, they were bad guys during this point in time. And they uh, going bad, against, real bad. Uh, Bobby Eaton and George Goulas, uh, the Jet Set, uh, until, until, and we'll read this in just a second, but you see, uh, you see old George down there with some uh, the basketball cheerleaders. Yeah, I would read, I would read what this says uh, right here, but uh, we, I may bore you to death in the process of reading all this. But, uh, <laughs> the but top tremendous you, basketball game. I will tell you. Well, I, there is some. I'll, I'll get to that <laughs> in, in, in just a second. Let me, uh, let me go off of this. I, I got to tell you a little bit about this, this, this thing right here. Uh, these pictures. It's could be called. It's called between the ropes. Well, Bobby. This was during the time that Bobby Eaton and Jack. I don't know if you was watching the. Uh, uh, there, this, is, this would have been around 1979, 1978. But Bobby Eaton turns on George Goulas. And he becomes a part of the Japanese connection. Now, who was the other person in the Japanese connection? I know it was Tojo Yamamoto, but who else was in it? The Great Pogo was one of them. The Great Pogo. And at one time, Gypsy Joe, I think, was a part of that as well. Is he in that program? He's not in the program, but now we, 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 we're, we're showing that here is the new Japanese connection, Bobby Eaton, Tojo Yamamoto. If you have, there is an interview with Bobby Eaton as part, and he was with the Pogo, great Pogo, as his partner and, and Tojo. And Bobby does a great interview. This, this thing that this whatever that Bobby couldn't do a great inter a good interview is, is nonsense. He was he was perfect in this. Well, by this time, Tojo Tojo does say in this, which Scott, by the way, Scott Scott Teal is the one who put together this program uh, years ago. Scott Teal did a great job on this program, but but uh, Tojo says in this at some point he says uh, he tells them he says he's by being a part of his Japanese connection. He'll have expensive cars, diamond rings, dining and exclusive restaurants. These are just a few of the things that await members of our organization. Bobby Eaton can kiss McDonald's goodbye. 
<laughs> he deserves only the best because I manage the best. Bobby Eaton, say goodbye to the sorry lot that you have chose to associate with and welcome to the Association of Winners. They had their own table at B's restaurant. That's right. <laughs> they, they, they did. Here is a. Uh, this is. A, I, I I love this. I wish I would have had uh, Tojo Yamamoto actually uh, autograph this. But uh, he was a bad guy. Would he have really autographed something, guys? Yeah, for us he would. <laughs> well, I'm just saying though. Scott Till put this in the program, but what if Nick Gillis fired you if you signed an autograph with somebody? If you was a heel. Uh, it's possible in the in the, right the bottom autograph. Well, they might have had a very special autograph session with him. Who knows? Well, Dojo Yamamoto Jack, one of the best uh, bad guys in wrestling history. Was he in that in that picture? Does he have his shoes on? His wooden yeah. shoes? No. Yeah, I love the wooden shoe. <laughs> yeah, I got hit by one of them wooden shoes. <laughs> and a kendo Dojo was tremendous. <laughs> There's no doubt. All right, here is a picture. But for those of you who don't know who Nick Goulas is, Nick Goulas, wrestling promoter, famous wrestling promoter in the South. Uh, here he is right there in his office. This will tell you, this is 1978. Let me read this to you. That's 1978 because I'm, Jack, if, if, if I'm correct, is the Nashville Sports Arena, has it been tore down? I believe it's still up at this time. Are they still using it, or are they? I think so. Because wasn't they wasn't they going to tear the building down? Yeah, yeah, that was the plan. Well, here it is. It says opening soon, 1978. Opening soon, the new sports arena. Nashville wrestling fans are for a real treat when the new sports arena at the fairgrounds opens up soon. That's right, wrestling fans. <laughs> Professional wrestling will move to their new arena from the fairgrounds in a couple of weeks. The new building has been a dream of promoter Nick Goulas for several years now, and it's finally been fulfilled. Didn't Nick Goulas help pay for that? Building? Nick Goulas did. He financed a huge chunk uh, of the construction of it, and that was the uh, uh, kicker to that was that he got to use it, you know, all the time. Well, it said this it on Wednesday night. Uh, Mr. Goulas, who is present – Presently making his headquarters on 8th Avenue South will be moving his entire office staff into the spacious office in the arena. Uh, how many office staff did he have? <laughs> I've been to that arena many times. I don't remember a big office space. but The new arena will be air-conditioned. Is it air-conditioned? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. The new, uh, I don't know that I've ever been in that building. It's nice. Never been in that. The new arena will be an air-conditioned comfort and will seat over 4,000 people comfortably. Ringside, uh, Mazazine. Is that how you say that word? Mazazine. Is that, I guess that's a, I don't think I've ever used that it's word. like a half floor between floors. All right, I got you. Balcony seats will be available for the fans to choose from. Stop by the fairgrounds and take a look at the new building. It will be permanent. It will be the permanent site for our sport for years to come. Hats off to Moeller and Dick Goulas for giving us a building we could enjoy and be comfortable in. Uh, looking for further announcements of the grand opening, 1978. I believe 1978. It. Here's I when it was just tore that arena down too. That's uh, that's crazy. You know, and they sell that place out week after week. Uh, here is uh, Dutch Mantel. Uh, you can't really tell that it's Dutch Mantel, but Dutch Mantel, Bobby Eaton, uh, they're going to start a feud by by this program. They're they're in a they're in a feud with each other because he's uh, uh, Dutch Mantel. I think they made a big deal about him being in Vietnam, and uh, you know his interview that he did on television for anybody that lives in the, the area. Uh, but good stuff. Uh, here is the champions at the time in 1978. World Heavyweight Champion Harley Race, Brass Nuts, Knuckles Champion Dennis Condry, The Jet Set, Bobby Eaton, and George Goulas, which they're having problems now. I say they're going to put that title up online. And, and uh, what is that? The Mid-America Mid -America Champion. Yep. is uh, Evidently, Dennis was holding all the titles. He was probably going to – soon was going to have the, uh, the triple crown. He was probably going to win the uh, – tag team title as well. No wonder. Now I know where Danny Davis got that from. He wanted to get all the championships. <laughs> <laughs> See there. 
Let's see what he wanted to do. You know, he wasn't going to – Dennis wasn't going to be the world heavyweight champion. So, we, we know that wasn't going to happen. But uh, – uh, because Harley wasn't going to give it up. This was very interesting. Uh, the the backside of this program is very interesting. Uh, can we tell who that guy is in the back of that? You would probably know him better, I think, as Haku. Haku. I don't know. Do y'all remember what he wrestled as uh, during this time? I don't remember what he wrestled as during that time. No, uh, I don't remember. It's a super nice guy, though, Tonga. If you look at uh, if you look at it Prince uh, in the corner, Michael St. John interviewing him. Ah. Yeah, he did go as uh, uh, Prince Tonga for a long time, but I'm not sure if that's what he did there. Here, here's the TV listings. Nick Goulas, inter, uh let's say they called it the uh, Goulas Wrestling Enterprises, uh, WTBY Channel Five in Nashville, Saturdays at two p.m. WZTV Channel Seventeen, Nashville, Tennessee, Saturday five p.m. WDEF Channel 12, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Saturday at 3 p.m. I always thought that was on at 5 p.m. It was at one time, and then it switched to 3, and then it finally ended up at like 3.30. WYUR Channel 49 in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, Saturday at 12.30 p.m. WBKO Channel 13, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Sunday at 10 p.m. WPPY Channel 24, Memphis, Tennessee, Saturday 9 p.m. W-O-W-L, Channel 15 in Florence, Alabama, Saturday, 12 noon. W-B-M-G, Channel 42, Birmingham, Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, they were on cable TV, Channel 3 in Florence, Saturday at 4 p.m. And I, do y'all remember the American Cable Network? No, I don't remember them. They had uh, 1,600,000 homes. Wow. Uh, this was 1978. I don't remember this. Uh, then they were on cable TV, Channel 8 in Somerset, Kentucky, Saturday, 5 p.m. Look at the channels he was on. All pretty good. So, now, I don't know about the Memphis channel. Uh, I don't know about WPPY Channel 40. Uh, uh, WDEF uh, was the one in northeast Alabama that, that I picked up. That was what I watched wrestling on. The WYUR? No, uh, WDEF. WDEF? Yeah. Great thing, Scott Teal put together a great program back in uh, back in those days, and and uh, this is just part of my uh, my program collection. Some got messed up in a, in a water incident. Uh, uh, the hot water uh, blew up and went all over some of these, but uh, I enjoy looking at these, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you have enjoyed it, give us the big thumbs up and subscribe. There I am going with that camera again. Give us the big thumbs up and subscribe to the page and go one step further and hit that notification bell.